Hi, Lynn. Hi. Hi. Today we're talking to Lynn Matsuoka, who is the world's famous, most famous sumo artist. She's worked for over 40 years in Japan, drawing and painting the world of sumo and kabuki. We're very excited to have her today to talk about a very famous figure in the world of sumo wrestling. Right, today we're talking about Hakuho, grand champion or Yokozuna Hakuho. Hakuho came from Korea where he actually wanted to be a basketball star. We had a long talk some years ago after he just got into the top division before he knew he'd be grand champion because nobody knows that for sure. And I told him I was in New York working with the Knicks and he said, wow, I've always wanted to be a basketball player. I wanted to be a star because he's six foot five, something close to that. And um, somebody, it turns out that somebody scouted him for sumo and he thought, well, you know, he'll take a trip to Japan and check it out. And he got hooked on sumo. It turned out he had a great deal of talent for it because he was very good at basketball. Like a lot of guys, a lot of Japanese guys who go into sumo over the years when they're very good at judo because judo and sumo are very close. So any guys who are really good at judo really excelled in sumo as a rule. He was very graceful, very agile, and he fit right into the sumo practice. And he went up in the ranks quite quickly, actually. So we were talking about basketball and he was a bit sad about leaving it behind, but he was happy he was doing well in sumo. So it turns out that when he became grand champion, zipping ahead him into his future, he won more tournaments than any other grand champion. The great Taiho was the man to beat. And Chiyono Fuji, the great grand champion Chiyono Fuji, who anyone who knows sumo knows of Chiyono Fuji, he was never able to surpass Taiho's record. But Hakuho was able to do that, and it was amazing. So when that happened, Sumo World Magazine in Tokyo asked me to do a painting of him on the dohyo during his opening ceremony for the cover of their magazine. And this, this is the original of that painting. If you can zoom in a little on it, you can see behind this figure of Hakuho, you can see the white writing behind it, which says Hakuho Yusho over and over again, which gives a nice substance to the background of the painting. There are no prints of this piece. This is an original and there's only one. This particular piece of Chiyono Fuji this is, a, this is the full image. This was used as the cover of this book, as you can see, but I have, I have the original here in New York now, but there are uh, prints left in the print edition and they're quite large. And I have quite a number available. If anyone would like one, please take a look at the website, hamptonsartist.com, and you'll find it there available. You can get it through PayPal or whatever form of payment you'd like. Just uh, let me know you want it and we'll send it out within days of the order. So one of these days, I have to tell you a story about Chiyono Fuji, who I worked with for many years, from the time he was very low ranking till the time he was grand champion, right through the time he retired. He was like a mentor of mine in sumo. He was an amazing man. I would call him brilliant, a renaissance man. He wanted the original of this painting. And I'll have to tell the story of how he threw a tantrum when I told him he couldn't have it because I used to sit next to him in the dressing room oh, for many years after he became grand champion. And I would do paintings of him sitting in the dressing room. And every once in a while, he would get up and walk out to the dojo for the fight. And he'd look at what I was doing and he'd say, Choda. Chodai means gimme. And if a grand champion said gimme, that was it. I had to give it to him. Couldn't say no. But when he said Chodai about this particular image, I said, well, we'll think about it. 
and I'll have to tell the story about what happened because I didn't give it to him and he threw a tantrum. But anyway, there are a lot of great stories. A lot of them will be in the memoir I'm writing about my 40 plus years with the world of sumo and the personalities in that world. They're amazing guys, they really are. And I stayed there because I was so enamored of the beauty and just the pageantry of that world that I just couldn't leave. Well, thank you for listening today. Let me know if you have any questions you'd like answered about sumo or kabuki. We'll get into kabuki in the next podcast. Thank you.